any one of you knows how to fly a plane, let me know. I'd like to join you. So we look at those pictures, months and years, and, and you open them up, and you talk about the good old days, right? Or laugh at old pictures. What it really does is it keeps us grounded. It reminds us of where we were and shows us how far we have gone. And sometimes it shows us how much or how little we have gone. But it's a good reminder. It's a very good reminder because it keeps us grounded. It's basically our compass that gets reset every now and then to point us back to where we, are, we ought to be. So just like looking at old photos, Psalm 78 is a reminder of how God uses our current circumstance in molding us into who he has called us to be. Psalm 78 verse 70 says, He chose his servant David, calling him from the sheep pens. When this was written, David was already king. But they were reminding everyone, including the king, of where he came from, his humble beginnings. It's interesting because, especially in that day and age, although being a shepherd was a common job, it was not something that that was desirable. That was a job that no one wanted. Right? Long hours, little to no wage, thankless job, and demanding customers. The sheep were the demanding customers. He had to complete, they completely depend on the shepherd. They, 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 need, they need him for guidance 24 7. They need him for provision. They need him for protection. Somebody here must be saying, sounds like my job. Right? Nevertheless, it was important that David would go through that time. It was through those times of difficulties when God molded David to be called into what he was going to be later in life. Remember, in every circumstance and experience, in every trial and tribulation, in every drop of blood, sweat, and tears, God is in it. Amen? Just as heat is applied to purify gold, each challenge strengthens us and changes us to become closer to what God has called us to be. So for our graduates, when you had your exams last week or a couple of weeks ago and you were studying, you were sleeping on your book, hoping it will go in your head. I used to do that in college. Right? Ayan ay physics exam, hindi nag-aral. Tulugan ko yung libro. Baka sakali pumasok. Right? That testing doesn't just measure how far you've gone, it also indicates or, or guards you and guides you into your next level. Until you know where you're from or what you can handle, you can never know how much more you can get through. And God is always faithful. Amen? God is always faithful. What's interesting here was for David... And some of us probably went through a similar experience. David's own family, Jesse, his dad, did not recognize his potential. In fact, he was discounted by his own father, Jesse, that he wasn't even considered when the prophet Samuel came. If you read through first, the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses 10 to 12, it says, In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. David was not even considered to be anointed, to become the next king. Verse 11, then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. I don't know about you, but if somebody says you cannot sit down when somebody's not there, I'll get that guy real quick, right? So somebody probably ran out, got David. He didn't even have a chance to shower or get changed or anything. He just grabbed him in there, put him in the lineup to be presented to Samuel. 
So Jesse sent for him, and he was dark and handsome, with beautiful eyes. Wow. And the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. Anoint him. David was the chosen one. From a shepherd, he was anointed and became king. So some of you are thinking, you know, I remember back in the day when I used to deliver pizzas, right? Sometimes it would get there cold. Hindi ko naman binawasan, malamig lang. Because I couldn't find a way, right? And I also remember the times when I had to wash pots and, and these big pans in one of the restaurants that I worked at. And I said, I would never do this again. <laughs> so it kind of pushed me. Not that there's not anything wrong with it. It's just not something that I'm, I'd like to do, right? So it pushed me to strive further. I said, Lord, I don't want to be in this kind of situation for the rest of my life. So it's, I, it, it helped me go through and, and have a point of reference where I want to be. But then today, <laughs> in my household, I am the dishwasher. <laughs> how, how things happen, but that's how life is. I like to do what my wife doesn't want to do. She doesn't want to do the dishes, I'll do it. Right? Amen. Good job. <laughs> unpaid job, sis. Unpaid. <laughs> but see, this is what happens. When you think that you are useless or worthless or you are at the bottom of the rung, God does great things for you. You may not be the best basketball player, but maybe you're the best soccer player. You may not be the best boxer, but maybe you're the best bouncer. Uh, joke lang. Man. Going back to David, <laughs> going back to David, when he was anointed by Samuel, the anointing oil that was poured over his head stood for holiness. It was used to set people or objects apart for God's service. And this commissioned each king and high priest as God's representative to the nation. So can you imagine what was going on in David's head? One moment he was out in the field tending sheep and goat. The next he was in front of a great prophet who was anointing him to become the next king. Right? It's like me washing dishes. Suddenly the president of America, at that time, calls me and says, you are now my appointed uh, Secretary of State. It's like, wow, amazing. But you see, nothing is impossible with the Lord. Amen? Nothing is impossible with the Lord. You have to remember that when you feel insignificant today or even wonder what, if anything you do counts, it does. When you're all alone in your room, God is keeping you company. When you think that no one else is looking, God sees. When you think no one cares, God says, you're the apple of his eye. Amen? In a way, this anointing of David, this ceremony, was a graduation ceremony for David. From being a shepherd to a king. From the lowest of services to the greatest position, Remembering who he was and where he came from kept King David grounded, but it also didn't keep him from his destiny. He remembered the promise of God. See, remembering is a very important aspect, especially in Jewish culture. Festivals such as Passover reminds the nation of Israel where they had been and what God has done. Reading the gospel reminds us of why Jesus came. Amen? Jesus was born, crucified, and died for our sins. And on the third day, he rose again, conquering death. That's what the book is all about. The Great Commission guides us on what we are supposed to do. To make disciples of all nations, baptizing each and every one in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the book of Matthew. And the Great Command tells us how to accomplish the Great Commission. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. When we do communion, it reminds us of what Jesus has done for us. 
on the night that he was betrayed. When we worship, we sing praises to him. It reminds us that Jesus is worthy of honor, praise, and glory. When we have prayer or prayer meetings, it reminds us that God answers prayers. Amen? Tithing reminds us of who we belong to and the God who provides it. Retreats such as the upper room experience reminds us that supernatural healing signs and wonders still happens today. God's presence is still here. It was true thousands of years ago. It's still true today. Sabi nga nung sambrad natin. Remember M, remember E. Put them together, remember me. Yeah, that's what one of our friends said. We also need, when, when we think about remembering, we, we have to remember where we came from. In the Philippines, we have this saying, Ang taong hindi marunong lumingon sa kanyang pinanggalingan, hindi makakarating sa paroroonan. I translated it, hopefully this is right. He who does not know how to retrace his origins would not reach his destination. Yan. Pwede? Pwede? Okay. Basically, the meaning of this is someone who forgot his humble beginnings are bound to lose sight of the more important things in life. I remember some people would say, you know, Juan would go to the Fil- America, and then when he comes back to the Philippines, he's John. Yan. Pedro goes to America, comes back to the Philippines, he's Peter. Este Tiburcio. De social eh, CC. Tiburcio, CC. Ano ba yun? Right? You have to remember where you came from. It keeps us grounded. You have to remember who you were with. Because it shows us how far we have gone. You have to remember the people, especially you know, young, young men and women here, remember what your parents have done to get you through where you are today. Some of us here, especially those who came from um, um, poorer families, you remember the day when you would sell everything. Your family would sell everything just so you can get through college and hopefully get to America. If you don't remember these things, you will not be humbled. If you don't remember these things, you will not, you will forget easily. If you don't remember these things, to you, it's very easy to take everything for granted. This is why we need to look back. Another person said, we must be humble, not humbug. Right? Humbug is proud. We must be humble. We also must remember not just where we were physically from. Most of us here are from the Philippines. We must also remember where we came from spiritually. Remember what it was like before you knew Jesus as your Savior. How it was before. If you cannot remember that time, then think about what it might become if you were not in the Lord. Remember the highs and lows of serving Jesus. If if you are at the peak of your service in, on, in the Lord right now, just write it down in a journal. So when you are in your lowest point, look, at, look back to it and you'll see how far you've gone. Never despise the small beginnings. Amen? That's what the words of God said. Everything starts with a drop. Everything starts with a step. Everything starts at some point in time. Remember the past, but do not live in it. Amen? God is working in you and through you daily, and you will always have a new testimony. And we must pray specific prayers to receive specific answered prayers. If all you're praying about every day is, Lord, let there be world peace. Right? World peace. Then it has to be specific. You need to be something that's in your family. If there's some sickness, pray for a specific healing over that particular sickness. Let's say it's diabetes or heart disease or something. If it's grades, pray that from, from A, you are going to A+. Wow. 
Uh, from four, you are going to five. Meron bang five? Wala na. Four perfect na yun eh. 